Hello, friends. Welcome back. My name's Ramon. How are you today? So, in the last month, a lot of things have happened in terms of the sunscreen game and what's been going on and the credibility of a few different sunscreens. And now you got Keep Cool added to the mix with them announcing officially that they've done third-party testing and that their SPF does not actually match what's advertised on the packaging. And so now you're probably like, what am I supposed to do? And we're gonna talk about that today. But before I get into it, I'm gonna ask you to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on everything? What sunscreens are you sticking to now that these two are very much in question? And what other questions do you have on the whole matter? So before I get into it, I'm gonna first of all say that I'm not gonna get into the whole keep cool situation. I know a lot of you have made comments and other videos and have asked me to make commentary and say my two cents on the situation. I don't want to. I did a whole Twitter thread on this yesterday. That was me airing my grievances, me airing out my thoughts. That's all I'm gonna say on the matter. I'll have that link down below. But I think it is very unfortunate that Keep Cool is now under this whole situation due to the fact that their manufacturer for their sunscreen, Green Cost, did them wrong, did them a little dirty. And now through whatever third party testing they've done, they've come to the realization that the SPF for the Keep Cool sunscreen does not match what's advertised on the bottle. But this also then applies because again, it goes back to the manufacturer to a bunch of other sunscreens. I'm gonna list down below based off the manufacturer for Keep Cool, Green Cost, as well as the manufacturer for Perito, New Cost. What other sunscreens kind of now fall under this implication of sunscreens that do not match their advertised SPF? Just because it's a lot of them. I don't know them off the top of my head right now. But kind of getting back to it, for those of you who don't know, who aren't familiar, back toward the beginning of December, a company who runs Inky Dakota, a really popular like skincare ingredients website, they sent off the Perito sunscreen to have two separate third party testing done on them to see and verify if the SPF advertised actually matched what was tested. And it didn't. And that was a big uproar just because for a long time, a lot of people had that assumption due to the percentage of the filters in the sunscreen, which I can tell you as a formulator, that does not mean a lot, but obviously evidence came back saying it was the case. And then this was a big thing, but then later a separate third party under the Korean dermatological something, did their own third party testing and found out that the Perito's SPF, again, was below what they advertised, but actually higher than what the first third party testing came up with at SPF of around 28. Original SPF was 19. You have two very different numbers there. So because of that, pretty much any sunscreen made by the original manufacturer of that Perito sunscreen, new costs, was put up in question just because a lot of times what happens is these manufacturers have a very generic formula that they say, hey, this reaches this SPF value. And then after that, brands will buy it, modify it to match their brand aesthetic and whatnot. For example, Perito was all about Centella. And and then the brand will then have their own sunscreen technically. Because of the fact that people were like, okay, well, this had low filters. It came up to this SPF that was much lower. What about all these other sunscreens? And thrown into that mix was Keep Cool, who's made by an entirely different manufacturer, I will say. There was a lot of assumptions. Keep Cool got pissed. People were like, well, it just doesn't add up. And then this week, Keep Cool came out with a statement officially stating, hey, we did third-party testing. Unfortunately, the results came back lower than what we were advertising and therefore we're pulling our product from shelves. As of right now, I'm filming this Thursday night, the 21st of January. There is no official statement as to what that figure is. I know that the morning this is going live, In Suk An, who is the head or the director of the Korean Dermatological whatever, who did the second round of third-party testing for Perito. It's coming out with a video where she does announce based on her third-party testing of the Keep Cool, which is actually going to be from their testers. So go check out that video if you want the tea on that. I don't know the figures right now. But basically, point blank, these sunscreens aren't matching the SPF 50 plus claims that they are advertising. They're much lower. But as you can see with the Perito, two rounds of third-party testing, there are still inconsistent values as to what the actual SPF could be. When you're doing SPF testing, you generally do a few different rounds of testing at the two milligrams per centimeter squared and you average those, you find the mean, and that's generally what the advertised SPF is going to be. So now you have these sunscreens, you're like, what the hell do I do with them? They're not SPF 50 plus. Well, looking at Perito, you're getting an SPF 19 and an SPF of 28, which is roughly close to 30, let's round it up. That's still not nothing. That's still a sunscreen protection, that's still SPF, and that's still good for something. I'd say, first of all, if you have these sunscreens, if you're already partway through them and you can't return them, just repurpose them. Those are gonna be great things for like your neck and your ears, which you can regularly reapply without a lot of inconvenience. They're great for your hands, which people neglect their hands a lot of times. Use those sunscreens in those regards, because again, even with Perito, those are really moisturizing, nourishing textures that happen to have sunscreen protection to them. So it's gonna really double for a separate purpose if you don't wanna use that for your face. With that being said, it's still, in my opinion, adequate sun protection if you wear enough. Again, oftentimes from dermatologists, they recommend anywhere from a 15 up to a 30, preferably up to 50. And the main reason for higher and higher values of recommendation for SPF is the fact that the general public does not wear enough sunscreen. Doing some research for this video and kind of seeing what these studies are, a lot of times people put barely even half a milligram per centimeter squared, maybe 
if they're generous, one full milligram per centimeter squared, which that's one milligram is still half of what sunscreen manufacturers use to test their SPF to actually get the rating on the front of it. The reason people recommend higher and higher values is because if you're not gonna wear enough, of an SPF 70, for example, you're still gonna get in the ballpark of at least an SPF 20 to an SPF 30. If you're watching this video, you're probably a skincare aficionado. You love your sunscreen, you wear a lot of it. Wearing an SPF 30 is still really good. Honestly, if you're looking at it very point blank, you're still getting decent sun protection. And plus, if you're watching this video, you're someone who probably hopefully reapplies sunscreen regularly when you're getting really direct UV exposure. So personally speaking, with my own perspective, that's still very adequate sunscreen protection. Considering right now that it's winter, I'm in lockdown, I'm in quarantine, I don't leave my house. So it's good every day or good going outside in the winter sunscreen. I would not recommend that for summer necessarily. But something that actually prompted this video, something I wanna talk about is the amount you wear and how that correlates to the SPF that you're getting. Once again, in order to get the SPF that's on the front of your packaging, these manufacturers test at two milligrams per centimeter squared. And as I told you, if you wear less, you get less value. The SPF that you're going to be get from your sunscreen is either linearly or logarithmically proportional to the amount of sunscreen that you wear. You wear half the amount of sunscreen you're supposed to at one milligram per centimeter squared, you're gonna get somewhere around the ballpark of half that SPF value. But what if you wear more. I did a little bit of research on this because I was like, well, if that's a T and sunscreen's not like this thing where it just kind of caps off and plateaus necessarily, what happens if you put on three or even four milligrams per centimeter squared? Because come to find out how I do my sunscreen testing actually is not how I apply sunscreen on a daily basis. I did the math, the research to figure out how much sunscreen I actually needed and how much sunscreen I actually put on and where that correlates to each other. Starting with how much I actually needed, kind of Steven, cosmetic chemist god, has a video on his Instagram where he talks about how to calculate how much sunscreen you need for your face size. And he basically took a sheet mask that fit his face contours perfectly, and he measured the width and the height times pi to figure out what surface area he had. I did the same thing. Fun fact, we have about the same size face. And I got roughly 380 centimeters squared. And so again, you need two milligrams per centimeter squared. So just times that by two, I would need roughly 760 milligrams, which is rounding up about 0.8 grams. And then he did a whole separate thing on the video about how to calculate what the gram is in milliliters. But I am a cosmetic chemist student. I got scales in my house. I did the measurements and the weights and Come to find out that 0.8 grams is roughly an eighth of a teaspoon if I'm talking in the form of Perito. Again, sunscreens have different densities. That weight and that volume is gonna vary based on sunscreen by sunscreen, but since we're talking about Perito, I use Perito. And so going off all those figures, that eighth of a teaspoon is enough to cover my face. I basically just double that to then account for my ears and my neck in the final measurement. Everyone's face is roughly a different size. Looking into it a little bit, the average human face surface area is anywhere between 350 to 450. Some people got big faces, some of y'all big heads. That's that's where you get a little bit of variance in how much you really need. But looking at it, that quarter teaspoon can actually account for either your face and everything else, or mainly just your face. That's where you kind of have to figure out for you uniquely how much you specifically need. Then here's the tea. Again, I told you on a daily basis, I don't wear sunscreen the same way I wear it for the videos. And so you see a lot of people oftentimes talk about, well, if you don't have a quarter teaspoon nearby, you can use the finger method. Three fingers is gonna be enough to cover all this stuff, right? Well, I was like, I know an eighth of a teaspoon is for my face. A quarter teaspoon will basically take care of everything else altogether. How much is the finger method? Well, two fingers for me is exactly a quarter teaspoon. And so going off that, I thought of, well, how much am I putting on my face? And let me show you. So this is how much sunscreen in the morning I apply on like a regular basis when I'm not filming. And I've been doing this for a very long time. And I didn't realize until recently this was an obnoxious amount of sunscreen. It's probably at least four finger lengths, if not maybe more. And that goes to show you that that's at least, I think honestly, a full teaspoon on my face. For evidence sake, let's figure it out. So that in itself is already one full quarter teaspoon. So that's two whole fingers right there. And then that's roughly about, I'd say close to an eighth of a teaspoon. And so technically I'm putting on triple the amount of sunscreen that I'm supposed to be wearing, which means I'm getting roughly triple the amount of protection that the sunscreen is advertising, technically. Again, looking at the research that I did for the video, talking about what protection, what level of protection you would achieve wearing more than just a two milligrams per centimeter squared, it's not necessarily a direct figure. Sometimes it's up to three or four times more than the SPF on the packaging. Sometimes it's literally just double. It kind of varies. I'll have that linked below. But that just goes to show the amount of sunscreen you're putting on and the amount of protection you're getting really varies and really matters on how precise or how accurate those figures all are. Coming back to these sunscreens, the reason I'm bringing it up is just because thinking about it, yes, doing the test that these labs did gave a smaller amount, but realistically with how much most of us are putting on, we're still getting like decent amount of sunscreen protection. If the Preto ranges anywhere from SPF of 19 to 28, 
with the test they did and I was putting on three times the amount of that, I'm getting decent protection. I'm not worried about that. So basically what I'm saying is wearing more sunscreen potentially gets you substantially more protection than you would think. Again, I'll link some studies down below showcasing some evidence and experiments around this. But basically what I read and what I got was the fact that once you get past that two milligrams per centimeter squared, the excess sunscreen essentially acts again. You have, you have more of that layer on and it's really accounting for and accommodating the inconsistency in texture of human skin. You know, your human skin has peaks, it has valleys. With sunscreen, especially why you want to wear more sunscreen is the fact that the more sunscreen you put on, the more of an even, uniform, consistent film or protection you're gonna be able to get. The more sunscreen you put, you have even more of a very consistent layer and therefore more adequate protection. A huge factor and actually improved SPF value is sunscreen's ability to form that uniform film because that in itself allows the UV filters to do the job they need to do a lot more effectively and more stably and therefore better SPF and overall UV radiation protection values. One of the textbooks that I like to use a lot though for referencing does account for the fact that once you start using an excess amount of sunscreen beyond that two milligrams per centimeter squared, there comes the likelihood and potential for less elegance, a more unpleasant texture, more greasiness, and as a result, the things we don't normally like to have with our sunscreens. But then we get to what makes Korean and Japanese sunscreens so nice, so pleasant, so amazing is the fact that they are so elegant. And with these sunscreens, wearing in excess doesn't become an issue of an elegance and you can do so without a lot of issues or any issues at all honestly. I was recommending these because they were great for my oily acne prone skin wearing like almost four times the amount I was supposed to. They're not worth throwing away necessarily. Considering how much I wear and how long these last me, specifically Perito, because Keep Cool is a little bit up there in price. That's not a bad deal, I'm gonna be honest with you, because I could go through this in maybe like three to four weeks, which will last me about a month. Just saying, at the end of the day, yes, these SPF values are much lower than that's advertised on the bottle based off these lab testing. We're still TBD on this one. But based off how I wear sunscreen, I wasn't very far off from what's actually on the bottle. At the end of the day, I understand the issue that a lot of you feel lied to. There was a lot of deceitery and scam foolery happening. I know a lot of people have different opinions on this. To me, it really comes back to the manufacturer themselves. If you're a brand and you go to someone trying to find a formula and the manufacturer's all like, well, I got this sunscreen to SPF 50 plus. It gets all these ratings, like trust us, you're golden. And you're like, yeah, okay, that sounds legit. I trust you. You're the manufacturer making this. That's why I feel the fault lies more with the manufacturer. I know a lot of people are like, well, the brand should have tested it out. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe. But there's also, you gotta look at it both ways. With a lot of things, there's always two sides to the story. There's different perspectives of it. And I think at the end of the day, this is a big ethical issue. And this obviously brings to light some problems, some biases and some issues with people who are running all of this. But also look at the perspective of the fact that you have these products, you love these products. It's not a complete waste of money in my opinion, again, Going off of how I was wearing this, apparently I was golden, I was good, I had nothing to worry about. And I know a lot of you are very generous with your sunscreen application, so you're not getting bottom of the barrel sunscreen protection. And mind you, SPF 19 is still not nothing. It's still something, remember that. But with that, that's really all I gotta say. There might be more, but if you have questions or if you bring up a point I forgot to mention, just comment down below. Again, my comments are always a point for discourse, conversations, really discussing things in a mature and civilized way. If y'all get rowdy, I will delete those comments, but feel free to comment down below if you have any questions or comments about what I said or your own beliefs on the matter. Again, I'm not gonna speak on the keep cool thing. Look at the link to my Twitter thread I have in the description box down below, and that's my point on that, and that's all I'm gonna say on the matter. Give this video a thumbs up. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button, notification bell, so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen and fancy related content on my channel. Thanks for watching guys.